Hey guys, and welcome back to part two of AI chatbot in Python. Now in the last video, we were kind of just working on figuring out how the chatbot's gonna work, talking about the data, how we're gonna feed it information. And now we're just gonna work a little bit more on the pre-processing of the data. So we just kind of were loading in some of the JSON file. I just wanna add a little bit to what we've already done because I kind of forgot it in the last video. So what I'm gonna do is create a new list called docs underscore Y. I'm gonna change this to docs underscore X. Now, the reason I'm going to do this is because for each pattern, I also want to put another uh, element in docs Y that stands for what intent it's a part of. So like what tag it is a part of. So to do that, we're just going to say docs underscore Y dot append. And in this case, we'll just say intent and tag. So this way, each entry in docs X corresponds to an entry in docs Y. Uh, and the entry in docs X is going to be that pattern. And then the intent will be in docs Y. So we know kind of how to classify each of our patterns, which will be important for training the model. So now that we've done that, we're actually going to stem all of the words that we have in this words list and remove any duplicate elements because we just want to figure out what our kind of vocabulary size of the model is. So how many words it has seen already. So to do that, we're going to say words equals. And in this case, we're going to say stemmer dot stem and w dot lower it's important you add this lower because we want to convert all of our words into lowercase so they don't get mixed up or we don't think they're different than uppercase words that are the same and we're going to say 4w in words uh, just like that now with that what we can do now is take our words list we can make it a set and uh, just you guys will see how this is doing. this is going to remove all the duplicates essentially we're going to say sorted list set words now what set does is it takes all of the words make sure there's no duplicates so it just removes any duplicate elements list is just going to convert this back into a list because a set is its own data type and sorted is obviously just going to sort these words uh just so we can use those a little bit nicer now for our labels i don't think we need to do anything with that but we can actually we could sort it if we want to so let's sort our labels as well so we'll say labels uh sorted labels and now what we're going to do is start creating our training and testing output now right now all we've done essentially is set up these few lists so we have all of our labels in one list all of the different words in our file in one uh or all of the words sorry in our patterns in one we have docs x which has the list of all of the different patterns and then docs y and the corresponding entries in docs x and docs y um, are like the words and then the tag for that for those words which is the pattern right hopefully i didn't confuse you too much with that but this output or this input is not actually going to work for our neural network because right now we have strings and neural networks only understand numbers so what we're going to do is create what's known as a bag of words that represents all of the words in any given pattern and we're going to use that to train our model now a bag of words is what's known as one hot encoded which means that essentially we're going to have a list, maybe something like this, that's going to be the length of the amount of words that we have. So if we had 100 words, then each encoding is going to have 100 entries, and it's just going to be zeros and ones. Now, each position in this list will represent either if a word exists or if a word doesn't exist. Now, this could also be two, it could be three, it could be four. It just tells you how many times each word occurs. So if you're confused right now, let me try to break this down a little bit more. We're gonna say that when we encode this, the first word in our list maybe is A. The second word in our list is like maybe bite. Maybe the third one is like goodbye, okay? So what we do essentially is we're gonna say, we're gonna look at a sentence and we're going to encode it in this form and we're going to say is there an a in our sentence if there's an a we're going to put a one if there's two a's we're going to put two and so on so the frequency goes as the entry because it's matching up the first entry with the first number right okay so now we're on the second one now does byte exist in our sentence if it doesn't we're going to put a zero if it does we're going to put how many times it exists and we're just going to keep going uh, throughout this list and throughout all of our words and figure out the frequency of our words and put them in a list that's like this now the reason it's called one hot encoded is because it just represents like if the word is there or not usually one hot is because you only do if the word exists in this case we're doing it with the frequency so like if you have two or 
or three, you're going to have that as well. And this is just a really good input to our neural network. So it can essentially just determine what words are there and what words aren't there as opposed to giving it some string, which it has nothing to do, or it doesn't have any idea what to do with. So to create this bag of words, uh, we're going to have to do the following. So we're going to say training equals a blank list. We're going to say output equals a blank list. And we're going to say um, out underscore empty equals, in this case, zero for x, or actually for underscore in range, and then the len of classes. Now, I forgot to talk about our output data. So our input data is going to be that big list with ho however many word entries we have in it. And it's just going to say whether a word exists or whether it doesn't. So we're going to have a bunch of zeros and a few ones uh, for each word that exists. So a bag of words. That's what that is. Now, our output actually has to be um, in a different form as well. So right now our output is simply something like uh, what's an what's an intent we have. We have greeting. So like it's all of our tags. So it's a bunch of strings. We have greeting. We have um, like goodbye or something. We have shop. We have all of these different tags. Now we need to turn these into one hot encoded as well, which means we're going to have a list that has a zero in it for all of the different classes. So for however many classes we have, and if that class or if that tag exists or is the one that we want, we'll put a one there. So let's say we have a list again that looks like zero, 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 one. Maybe we have four tags and the first tag is like, hi, the second one is buy, third one is like sell, and the last one is help or something like that. Then this would mean that help is the tag associated with uh, whatever output or input we have here because it has the one beside it. And that's the way that this is going to work for our output. So we're going to have a bunch of output lists and they are all going to be the length of the uh, amount of classes we have. All right. So now it's time to actually create these bag of words. So we're going to say for doc in docs underscore X. And we're actually going to do X comma enumerate because we're going to need to use this. What we're going to do is we're going to say bag equals a blank list. And this is going to be our bag of words. So that one hot encoded um, words that you guys will see. We're going to say pattern underscore words equals in this case. Actually, we don't need to do that. Sorry, my bad. We're going to say uh, WRDS equals. And now we're going to stem all of the words that are in our patterns. Because when we stem them, we only stemmed each word in our like words list, we didn't stem them when we added them into docs X. So we're just going to stem them here. We could have stemmed them when we added them, but we're just going to go ahead and stem them here. So we're going to say stemmer dot stem. And in this case, we'll do W for W in. And I guess in this case, it's going to be docs uh, or just doc like that because doc will get all of the different docs in docs X. Now let's make sure we close that list off. And I think that should be good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go through all of the different words that are in our document or in this word list now that are stemmed. And we're going to put either a one or a zero into our bag of words, depending on if it's in the main word list, which we have here or not. So we're going to say four. And in this case, we're going to say W in words. And again, we're looping through this, which means all of the words that we have. And we're going to say if um, what do you call it? If W in this case, we're going to say docs underscore X or just doc. My bad. Um, is it docs underscore X? No, it's W R D S. My apologies guys. So if W in W R D S, I probably should have called this something else, but it's fine. Meaning that the word exists in the current pattern that we're looping through. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say bag dot append one which means that, yep, this word is here. So we put a one representing that this word exists. Otherwise, what we're going to do is say bag dot append zero, which means that, you know, this word isn't here. Um, so we're putting a zero. It's not here. There we go. So actually I lied when I was telling you we were using frequency. We're just doing one hot encoded, which means if the word exists, we put a one. We don't care how many times it exists. We just put a one that exists five times. We still only put a one. So my apologies about that. Now, what we're going to do is now generate the output uh, and append these into training and output. So the output has to be generated like this, right? Uh, where we have a bunch of different zeros or ones representing the tag that is, well, that thing. 
So what we're going to do is say output underscore row equals in this case list um, and then out empty and actually we're not going to do list what I want to do is just make a copy of this list would have done that as well but we'll just do that it's a little bit nicer and we're going to say output row and in this case classes dot index and then this we're going to say docs underscore y x and we'll talk about all this in a second equals one so what we're going to do is we're going to look through this classes list or actually what am I calling it classes for its labels my apologies we're going to look through this labels list here we're going to see where the tag is in that list and then we're going to set that value to one in our output row and that should work if you guys don't understand that leave a comment but it's fairly straightforward and now what we're going to do is we're going to say training dot append and in this case we are simply going to append a list that has um the bag and then we're going to go to output and we're going to do, going to append the output row so now what we're going to have is two lists so we're going to have a training list that is going to have a bunch of bags of words which are like just a list of zeros and ones and we're gonna have a bunch of outputs which again are a list of zeros and ones now they are both one hot encoded and we talked about what that means okay so now that we've done that what we're gonna do is we're gonna shuffle up our data uh, actually we won't shuffle it because if we shuffle it then it's not gonna work from output and training uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn these into actually NP arrays uh, just because we need to work with numpy arrays for TF learn. So we're gonna say numpy.array training. And then we're gonna say output equals np.array, and in this case output. Alright, so that is actually all we're gonna do for this tutorial. We wrote this bit of code here, which essentially is gonna give us a bunch of bags of words and we're just getting our data ready to feed into our model. So in the next video, what we're gonna do is start writing the model. Uh, hopefully we can get done with writing the model, maybe do a little bit of testing on it, and then in the final one or two videos of the series, depending on how long this takes, we're going to work on actually using the model and making a nice framework for it so that we can type a bunch of stuff and have it look really awesome and nice. So anyways, that has been it for this video. Quick recap again, we just did the bags of words here. If you guys don't understand this, leave a comment, join Discord. I will try to help you out and I'll see you in the next video.